weekly chloroscope. But we're here to chlorophyll you in on all things photosynthesis. I'm Peter Hitchener. And I'm Lee Lin Chin. And tonight on the program, we uncover what really goes on inside plant cells. In particular, their chloroplasts. We all know that energy needs for humans and animals are achieved by the food that we eat, which, for the most part of the animal kingdom, is derived from plants. But how is it then that plants make their own food? Through a series of complex reactions, plants are able to take carbon dioxide, water, and energy from the sun and turn it into the delicious wheat plant food known as glucose, as well as the oxygen we breathe. Photosynthesis is possibly the most important biochemical process that occurs across the globe. It occurs in a huge diversity of plants, algae, not to mention bacteria and protists, each of which are grouped collectively known as autotrophs. The process of photosynthesis in plants creates carbohydrates, the building blocks for all planets' food and energy. Thus, a pivotal process for all forms of life, both autotrophs and heterotrophs. Within the plant cells are the chloroplasts, the photosynthesis factory, if you like. However, the process itself involves a very complex series of chemical reactions. Photosynthesis occurs in two main stages, the light-dependent and light-independent reaction. Here to give you the forecast on light-dependent reactions, it's over to Lavinia. I see. Uh, well, the first process is actually split into two pathways. The main pathway, which is a non-cyclic, and then we also have a secondary cyclic pathway. Let's jump into the predictions for the non-cyclic pathway for this week. Here in the thylakoid membrane, uh, we're seeing two photosystems, which have been named in order of discovery, photosystem 1 as well as photosystem 2. Uh, we're predicting strong sunshine hitting photosystem 2 at a top of 680 nanometers, which will then be bounced down by light harvesting complexes. Uh, we'll eventually see a splitting of a H2O molecule, giving off an electron, which in its excited state due to the light, is going to move up the system uh, and then across in a southeasterly direction, downgrading an energy state and giving off ATP as it goes. Now, the purpose of this uh, cytosome, cytochrome here, my apologies, is, to predict, is predicted to facilitate the transport of the electron into photosystem 1. Uh, similar to photosystem 2, here we're going to see more light being accepted, this time at a balmy 700 nanometers. Uh, and then again we're going to see the electron becoming excited and moving up the system, uh, before moving across the transport chain to the ferrodoxin. At this complex we see NADP plus being reduced and taking on an electron, becoming NADPH and ATP. Uh, which is predicted to eventually produce a glucose molecule. Now, just briefly, we may see the cyclic pathway come into play this week, when high levels of oxygen, or NADPH, accumulate in the stroma. Now, this is going to block up the non-cyclic pathway. So, in the cyclic pathway, uh, photosystem 1 cycles electron energy to create a hydrogen ion gradient, which in turn is predicted to drive ATP formation, although we will not be expecting NADPH, or oxygen, to form. Back. Thanks, Lavinia. Now to give us the latest action in chlorosport, we cross live to the Stroma Dome with Tony Jones. Now, Tony, big season for the light independent reactions. That's right, Pete. Run, swim, or Kelvin cycle. This is the independent sports reactions. With the light dependent season finishing last Sunday afternoon, the sporting world is left to find another Friday night venture. And with the light independent season shortly coming around, fans won't be disappointed. CEO Phil Cloro earlier today introduced new, exciting rule changes to the light independent season. Games will now be played entirely right here at the Stroma Dome, with the once preferred daytime slot now being subsided for predominantly nighttime games. The light independent season is looking to capitalise on the leftovers from the dependent season to continually produce the same energy all year round. Moving on to trade news, speculation of the controversial trade of carbon dioxide to the RUBP Suns has been confirmed today, with club manager Rubisco reportedly being the major catalyst for this transfer. Releasing halfback 3PGA to accommodate for this trade, the once gun player is rumoured to be making a change in codes. Vision shows his managers ATP and NADPH pushing 3PGA for a conversion to GA3P. Once converted, it is believed he'll fall under the guidance of current club managers ADP and NAD+. Statisticians from website Quarobet and Gamble Plus are presenting 1 in 6 odds of GA3P retiring from his career in sport for a life of sugar. However, probable 5 of 6 odds that he will eventually convert back to his home, RUBP Club. Pete, Leland, over to you. Thank you for that, Tony. Photosynthesis. 
clearly is such an important reaction. It really goes to show how genius in nature can be. It's no surprise then that scientists are effectively looking to harness and develop photosynthesis related technologies of their own. Delving into the current world of photosynthesis technology market, it's Ross Greening. Thank you, Leland. It's a new era in photosynthetic technology. And have I got some glorious news for you tech-savvy investors. The green tech sector is, is experiencing an extraordinary growth cycle, backed by billionaire investors such as Richard Planson. It's time for you to get on it, too. Designer Julian Meciori has successfully created an artificial biological leaf. The leaf is created through extracted proteins from silk, which has the unique property of stabilizing organelles. Chloroplasts are often referred to as the powerhouse of the plant cell, and are extracted from plant cells and inserted into the suspended silk protein matrix. The end product is a lightweight artificial leaf, which when exposed to the light and a small amount of water, absorbs carbon dioxide from the environment and produces oxygen. The utilization of this material on a large scale could produce phenomenal results. Investors hoping for a bright future of space exploration are diving into this oxygen producer, whilst environmental investors hope this is a new leaf in tackling carbon emissions. Back to you, team. Thanks for that, Russ. Much on for the weekend. Oh, just the usual Saturday night, getting chloroplasted with you, Pete. <laughs> Is that right? We'll save that conversation for another time. Well, that's about all we've got time for on your weekly chloroscope. And we'd like to thank our main sponsors. Photosynthesis, that sun that just keeps on shining, and of course, H2O. Remember to stay hydrated, especially you two alkaloids. From the team, stay green, and good night.